Hi. So we're gonna go over the uh, this di die of a uh, Innova Champion T Bird. So the first thing I did is always just just wipe the stamp um, with acetone and a cotton ball. Um, I've gone over that before in some of my other videos, just in text or whatever. Just you know, to acetone or a cotton ball, wipe it until the stamp comes off. Just try not to spend too much time in one area. It'll start scar the plastic. Um, kind of just if it's if you if it's not coming off move away from it go to another area and come back to it later because if you spend too much time in one area at one time it'll scar the plastic that's what i've kind of learned um so next thing i did was go ahead and print this out with my cricut with my stencil cutter um the note i would say about this and the way i do most of my stencils is i i print it out on a full 12 by 12 cheetah vinyl and i center it i line up the center point and mark it with a sharpie on the piece of vinyl at the six six inch and six inch mark and mark the center of the piece of vinyl and then i print out the stencil so then once it's all printed out i have a center line marked up that i can line up with my laser pointer um I do all that before i print it out once it's printed out oh sorry also make sure it's going to print out in the top left corner by default on the cricut application so make sure you move it before you print it into the center of the screen right uh or center of the cricut board the line it up just like okay there's your center point of your design line that right up at your six by six you know it's got a big grid it's played with everything measured out it's pretty easy to line up the center point all right so then of course uh get it all printed out put your transfer paper on make sure you smooth it out nice and evenly it's not as crucial to get it perfect at this point it's more crucial to get it perfect when you're applying it to the disc okay so once you get the transfer paper on there, you're going to line up the laser pointer on the disc. Um, and then what I do is I take my transfer paper, or I mean, take my backing off. I kind of did in reverse where I probably shouldn't take the backing off before I line. I got the laser pointer all lined up, but that's what I did. Get my uh, disc lined up, take a backing off your vinyl. I, I do it by setting it down. You could do it in opposite too. You could put the, the vinyl down with this stint or, and you can mark the center point on the sticky side if you really wanted to and then put the uh, disc face down on it might be necessary in some applications to do that because sometimes you can't really see the center point on the from the top of the disc but you can always almost always see it from the inside so you've got that little like little plastic node where they injected it whatever so you can always tell what the center is on the inside pretty much however you want to do that i use a laser pointer you line up the center point however you want to do it which are easier for you that's just how i do it all right um once i get it on there though uh, don't just be real hasty be real smooth about uh starting from the center and working your way out and avoiding getting wrinkles wrinkles cause bleeds so take your time do it really slow and methodical don't get air bubbles in there and start from the center out in a spiral motion don't just do it like all the way down each side you, you're going to end up with wrinkles got to do it evenly working your way out because it's circular it's not a flat surface you're going to get wrinkles when you fold it over. That's no problem. When you do fold it over, just kind of give it a little bit of a tug just to kind of keep it uh, tight on the outside. Don't rip it or anything or pull it too much. You don't want to mess up your design or start pulling it away. But just keep make sure it keeps really tight whenever you fold it over. And that's pretty much it. Uh, here's what it looks like.
Okay, so moving to the next part of this, um, just to let you know, I kind of just gave up on doing the, the quick high-speed video of this part because it was not cooperating with me. That's trying to edit this video and in high speed, it was just not cooperating at all. So you've seen me weed a stencil before. I weeded a stencil, okay? The tools of the trade that I like to use, this little here Cricut spatula. If you don't have one of these nifty things, a credit card type thing of any sort will work. I was using a Kroger card. Lately, this PDGA card is laying around, so I've been using it. That's my old one. I got a new one this year. Today, actually. All right. Um, another thing I use, scalpel to cut vinyl as I'm pulling it off. Makes it easier on more intricate stencils so you don't pull off too much at once. You just kind of work on your sections and cut off so you don't go crazy pulling off something that goes all the way across the whole design, right? Since this is great, I like it over X-Acto knives because it's flat, doesn't roll, safety precaution, won't roll off the edge of the table. Okay, tweezers. Uh, the more money you spend on tweezers, the better. I, like, I just try to find some that with good teeth that really hold on to the vinyl. I like this pair that I got. It's just I got it at Walmart, but it's one of the higher dollar pairs from Walmart. I think these were like five dollars or something. So I did spend a little bit of money for it, considering they're just tweezers. Okay. Dental pick. This thing is awesome. I love it. There's one that came with the Cricut that works pretty good as well. I would if I didn't already have this one, I'd probably just use that one. It was fine. It came with the Cricut like extra pack, as did this. It came with the same thing that this came in. Okay. But this dental pick thing is great for, oops, I just knocked off them Sharpies. Um, this dental pick is great for that picky side. Obviously, they use that to grab at the vinyl and get it started and everything, pick everything off. But you also use, like, that curved side to, like, as a burnishing tool, I think that's the word, to just push things back down or hold them down as you're pulling things off. Oftentimes, kind of hold it with either that side or even maybe just the very corner, not with the Sharpie chart part as I'm pulling it off just to keep another part down, right? I'll use that side a lot for that too, actually, because it's got like a right angle on it. Anyway, tools of the trade. I weed the stencil, right? I pull out the part that I want to dye black. I leave the part that want to remain negative space, okay? Uh, the next thing I did is I use a hairdryer to heat everything up and smooth out the last of the freaking air bubbles or anything. This works good. Just don't get too carried away with it. When you heat up vinyl, it makes it easier to get the, uh, it makes it more stretchy and you can get all the air bubbles and everything out. It also makes the adhesive like gooey again, I guess, and it makes it stick better once it cools down again. Um, just be careful on like the thinner parts of this. When it, when it gets warm and you start like pulling at it, it can tear very easily. So the thinner areas, maybe you don't even really want to hit it too much with the heat, but just kind of go over it with your with this thing uh, or the back side of your little thing just go over everything real fine detail like i said i have video of this and you'll see i obsess over this a little bit i spend a lot of time on this and this is how you do what you have to do to not get bleeds you got to spend the time take the effort so i did that got everything out got it ready for the hot dip um if you don't know about hot dips uh i won't go into a lot of detail basically hot water mixed with black dye it's an electric skillet I get it up to about 150 to 160 degrees. Once it's to temperature, I mix it all up real good. Make sure the dye is thoroughly mixed up. Float the disc face down on it. I set a timer for like, I usually do eight minutes on each on each run or maybe even seven minutes, just depends. Uh, so I do eight minutes. My timer goes off. I just, at that point, I'm just picking up, checking on it, make sure that everything looks like it's good. I don't have like some big spot that's not getting dyed because of an air bubble or something. If that's the case, make sure I fix whatever I got to do to make sure that it's not happening anymore. Put it back down another eight minutes. Usually at this point, it's done. It's good to go. I'll show you how the, in the thing, how it, like at the end of this video, at least how it came out at that point. And there you go. Alright, now that our hot dip stencil is complete, you kind of see what, I, what it came out as, and I st it's kind of hard to see it's all black, but what I'm now going to do is peel all that vinyl off, and you'll be left with just the yellow and the black dragon left on it, and that's basically the next step. I'm not going to show you all of it, but I'll show you like the last few pieces being pulled off, and then the last thing that I do just to help, the, you need to do this, it's kind of like an important step in my opinion, um, 
I take like a little scrap piece of vinyl that still has like the sticky on it, and I'll like in this case I'm like wrapping it around two fingers and some point sometimes I just kind of grab the piece and do it, but just using that to go over and get all that adhesive on that vinyl will pull the adhesive on the disc off. It's a lot easier to do it that way. A lot it leaves a little lot cleaner and you won't pull off any dye that way. If you go you can good it off with like uh like rubbing alcohol or something, but after a while that uh, too much rubbing alcohol like will make the dye run. Um obviously acetone definitely will you don't want to use acetone. That'll be disastrous. Uh same thing with like clear worm dip, just like the same thing. Um, maybe Goo Gone would work, um, especially if, like, you let it dry for a while and then you come back and do it. Uh, rubbing alcohol might even be safe at that point. But, point is, I mean, I use rubbing alcohol to mix dyes when I'm doing it by, like, like hand painting or whatever. So, it, it can make your dye, your colors run. So, if I were you, I would just do the vinyl thing. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um... And then it'll be done and it's ready for the next step and I'll kind of show you how we finish that up and then we'll talk about the next step after that because that's it for the stencil and we'll go on to the how we you know increased the, you know multiple techniques on this disc basically all right here's how it went So we finished up with the stencil and now we're going to work on the bed die. Um, so on this bed die basically it's, it's I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. It's a glue bed. Um, I didn't really have a specific pattern or anything in mind. It was pretty random and to be honest with you I made I made some mistakes on this that I learned from. Um, didn't really do anything wrong with the bed itself. It actually came out really well as far as I didn't really have any air bubble issues or anything like that. I finally got a good torch to get the air bubbles out. It helped immensely. Um, I also learned a little trick with a toothpick to kind of pull. You can pull like the film off the top of it. And sometimes you can pick up air bubbles and stuff in that when you when you pull that off. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know how to explain it. When sometimes the acetone hitting one place over and over will develop like a little hard filmy surface on top of that glue the heat will, from the torch will do the same thing and when you get that when you get that little film you can literally just like take a toothpick or something else i've been using toothpicks so that's what i have sort of poke things with and i just kind of put it right in the center of that and just twist and it'll just wrap that film up and then just kind of gently pull it out just be careful i mean it's just like everything else you're working with don't don't screw things up you can do this in the middle of the design i did it before i started adding ink so it really wasn't an issue but you can also do it in the middle of a design and if you're doing that make sure you don't like dribble glue or dye all over the place you know you shouldn't really be picking up dye when you do that because usually that if that film is there the dye doesn't won't won't stay there it'll 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 slide off that film and that's why you got to get rid of it anyway anyway i don't want to go into too much detail on that i'm gonna do a quick video of this glue bed um my only tip for glue bed really uh use your torch get the air bubbles out it's that's crucial um when you're using the torch on the air bubbles don't get too close to it you don't you're not trying to to like hit the actual glue with the, the, the fire you're just trying to hit it with the heat and like the the, the wind like the, the pressure from the output from the torch from the butane coming out that can cause air bubbles too if you get too close so you're really just trying to hit it with the heat and nothing else so you kind of do this thing where you kind of lay the flame in a little sideways and don't, don't totally touch it so get the air bubbles out that's one tip um, like i said the thing about the film when you're pouring the glue into the bed, um, people say go fast, some people say go slow. My only advice is just go keep a steady speed. Don't sit there and go, oh, 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 you know, just once you start pouring, just leave it there. Yeah, don't let it go glug, glug, glug like it would like, you know, you poured soda out of a two liter. You don't want the cuckoo, cuckoo. You don't want to come a bunch to come out in surges. You want a slow, or not necessarily slow, but you want a steady stream. Um, when you're when you're done pouring it, when it gets to that level and you kind of stop the pour, always good to kind of get your finger in there and kind of get that last drop. So because that last drop always kind of hits and makes a little swirl and 
causes air bu- a couple air bubbles or something, I'd rather have a little glue on my finger and just wipe it right off and avoid that whole mess. So here you go. This is me uh, just a quick run through the the bed die and then me putting the the, the dot or the disc in the bed. The video is gonna go pretty quick because it's like a 40 minute process. Well, it really shouldn't have taken that long, but there's a lot of me messing around in the middle. But I just condensed this to a real quick thing. So here you go. This is me doing the glue bed. Okay, so that was a quick rundown of that uh, bed die. It doesn't go that fast. Obviously, it's in like super high speed. I mean, that was a, you know, the actual pouring the die bed, doing all that was probably only about like 15, 20 minutes. But it's like a 40 minute video because I'm doing, uh, I ramble and I mess around with other stuff. When I'm doing this stuff, this is just me in my house playing around dying discs. That's why I just kind of re- record everything and then I filter it out later. Um, I'm thinking about just like starting to live stream every time I do a die session. That way, if somebody wants to watch the long uncut version, they can. But at the same time, I can still chop up these recordings and give you a quick condensed version. So that way you have both options. Because if you watch this raw footage, uh, you're going to get a lot more knowledge from it. Because I just talk and give tips and stuff the whole time and explain what I'm doing and mistakes I've made, lessons I've learned, etc., etc. So, skip to the point here. Before I started this dive bed, I told you I made a mistake. Real simple mistake. I went too dark. It blended in too much with the black. The crimson was too dark of a red to use. I learned a lesson on that. Um, this is a lesson for everybody. When you mix, uh, it all came from the fact that I was using radical red. Uh, I know from experience, and I should have just thought about that ahead of time, that radical red is a liquid, comes out pretty red. Radical red mixed with lotion comes out pink I, w- I talked to a friend about that they said hey try crimson with your lotion bed it should come out red so that was my thought process but i guess it didn't i didn't stop to go oh wait it's not going to be so dark or it's not going to be an issue because i'm not using lotion i don't really need to use crimson that might be too dark it was too dark so now lesson learned i learned something whatever so i'll go ahead and show you the basically the final step in this and that's just me putting a spin die around the edge let me roll that and you can see the final product and this one's in my bag it's got my name on it don't really have any intention to sell it but uh if you're interested and you want it get on my facebook thing send me a message you know i mean i'm i didn't think it came out all that cool just because of the bed die got a little too dark but not it's, it's cool looking when it's backlit there's there's a picture at the end of this that's gonna like show that and it looks pretty good i think so anyway here's the last step and this is the T-Bird, Dragon Knot, whatever you want to call this thing, it's done. So, enjoy. <laughs>